We've just seen a big update with Insta360 Studio with the launch of Insta360 Studio 2020. And now Insta360 only has one desktop editor and that can be used for the whole range of Insta360's consumer cameras. And in this video, we're gonna look at the five new biggest features. There is now a thumbnail mode to check files more easily. And you can switch between thumbnail and list view by clicking it here so it makes viewing and accessing the right clip a lot easier and faster. This is particularly useful for time-lapse photos as you can open up the clip and see all the thumbnails for each photo in the sequence. You can now export multiple clips at the same time, so you can export multiple videos or multiple photos simply by ticking the tick box in the top right hand corner of each thumbnail. You can now select dynamic stitching which gives you better stitching results for 360 photos and 360 videos. But what is dynamic stitching? So dynamic stitching is the same new stitching algorithm that they use with the Insta360 Evo and the Insta360 ONE R and it provides a flawless stitch even in the most challenging situations. Instead of providing a customized stitch for every scene, it provides a customized stitch for every frame. So why you'd want to turn dynamic stitching on or off, I don't know. You'd think that it would just be on by default. But what I can say is the results I think are pretty impressive. You can combine this with the chromatic calibration that you can select here, and then overall the stitching results are so much better. The chromatic calibration adjusts the differences in color between the two lenses, and this is usually caused by uneven light falling on each lens. So by selecting this, you're making the color of the two images blend more naturally. The new studio software also has some AI integration, and when I first saw this, I thought that it would replicate what we've seen in ShotLab with the Insta360 ONE R app. And to try it, I thought I'd use a rolling planet because in ShotLab, this only requires one clip. So first of all, you need to select the head icon next to your clip. The head icon appears next to your clip in list mode or in thumbnail mode, it's quite hard to see, but it is there in the corner of the thumbnail. It took 10 minutes to analyze this one minute clip. And then once it's analyzed, the head icon turns yellow. You then save the clip and you're then taken to another screen where the clip is split into different files, depending on how it's analyzed the clip. So all the AI did was follow me around in a circle. So the AI just tracked me as I ran around the camera. When I then selected free capture, it said that big boom clips aren't supported in free capture. So I assumed that maybe this was considered a big boom shot and that Insta360 had a list of all these shots that the studio can create but we just have to figure out how to create them. But when I contacted Insta360, it appears that that isn't the case. So I've only tested the studio software with this one shot, but I'm sure there are other types of shots that you can create with it. But I think effectively what it's doing is that it's a tracking software and it tracks you as the subject and creates the best shot that it can get. How Insta360 explained this feature is like this. You can auto reframe to automatically identify important shooting subjects and get great clips at the best angles when playing 360 videos. So as I said, I think that this just tracks you as the subject in the shot. But the problem is it just takes too long to analyze and process it and you don't know what result you're going to get or what the software is actually looking for in the first place. If you've discovered anything new about this AI software and how it works then please let me know in the comments. Now this has been a long time coming but you can finally adjust the speed of your videos. You can adjust the speed of your videos from a quarter speed right up to 64 times and everything in between. This particular feature is great news as it gives you so much more flexibility in the software when you're doing your edit. I think overall all the features we've looked at are a great upgrade for Insta360 Studio particularly if this is the main desktop editor that you use. Let me know in the comments what you think of these updates and what features you'd like to see added in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.